Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, back with more Scrolls King of the Beta action, where today we are doing a best of three series between Think Tank's Donkey and La Hopa of Strategic Angels. So this is going to be a series where both players are kind of evenly matched and are bringing some pretty similar decks to them. But let's go ahead and take a look at the first deck each player is going to play. And in fact, we're getting even more similarities because Donkey is bringing an undead decay deck and La Hopa is bringing a not quite as undead decay deck but still a decay deck so this is going to be a decay versus decay match yes it is a matchup that still is alive today and these two decks do kind of function a little bit differently here you have uh, Donkey using Revenants using Anima Conduits to get more Revenants really trying to get a lot of value out of his undead creatures whether it's for Irva voice of the dead to get some extra attacks in there restless bones is a good group buff or anything like that slayer vestige another very strong early drop that is undead as well so if he can get a flesh animator out there and get a lot of undeads he can control the board and get a lot of attacks going very quickly on the other hand Lahopa playing a little bit more of what I guess I would call a traditional decay deck where it includes your poisons where it includes your curses especially curse presence always playing very nicely with baleful witch and bloodline taint playing very nicely with baleful witch and bloodline taint can actually be a very strong card in this matchup considering donkeys playing so much undead but maybe neither players expecting the other to start with decay but that's what we're going with today so let's go ahead and jump right into game one once again best of three series each player brings three decks Winner gets to keep using his deck. Loser has to choose a different deck. First to win the best of three moves on. Hope you know how that works. Let's go ahead and get this started. Here we go with Donkey on the left and La Hopa on the right. Donkey starting off with his Decay and decent opening hand drawing Restless Bones first. Getting a few uh, undead creatures. The Visage is going to be nice. La Hopa on the other hand immediately mulliganing and probably going to like that because he gets an Ilmire Tribesman Loyal Darklings. Oblivion Seekers, some pretty decent early plays, but Donkey, liking what he has, you want to Slayer Visions out early, because that early of a Slayer is very nice. Yes, it does have three cooldown, but if you get it on round two, you're usually going to get one attack in there. So, La Hopa with an Ilmire Tribesman, already trying to run away a little bit from the center of the board, so we have Donkey in the middle, La Hopa kind of on the south side here, and a second Slayer Visions as well. So Donkey, I don't want to say he's hitting the nuts here, as he plays a Husk as well. But like I said, this is this is the tip off right here that this is a uh, undead style deck, the husk, because you don't always see husks going around just on their own unless they get necrogen out. So La Hope has got to know kind of what Donkey's deck is all about here, and does he have answers right now? This is the interesting part about Decay is that Decay isn't necessarily about the very opening of the game. But we do have an Ilmar Rod Eater that is essentially saying, yes, please kill this Tribesman. I do like Tribesmen because they are pretty much two for four health. They sometimes will attack, but they act as pretty good chump blockers as well. But that chump blocker is not only going to feed the Rod Eater, but it's also going to feed the Harvester. Harvester is very big, very relentless, but they don't count down unless things die. So Decay is really good at killing units, sometimes even in its own. So La Hopa actually getting two Harvesters and the Lex to drop one of his own will sacrifice and the other definitely wants to get an Oblivion Seeker out as soon as possible. And this is where you're going to start to see some of these decks really diverge just a little bit. So Donkey understands that he's probably going to die to the Ilmar Rod here. But he does get out of Flesh Animator and there we go. Right away. First blood going to Donkey. You don't get bonus gold for that in this game. And while he is going to lose one Slayer Vestige to the Rod Eater. His other units could get sped up by the Flesh Animator, so that's pretty nice. If you can get that going, and once again, that's a key if, because both of these Harvesters are now on three cool, three cooldown, three countdown. And Donkey has a lot of inexpensive cards. I do think this is a very interesting deck. I just want to see how it works well together. So another Flesh Animator right here. Flesh Animators are not undead, so they don't buff themselves down, but they do help other things. So the Rod Eater... 5-2, much more manageable, actually within Soul Steel range. And there's Lahopa's first Bloodline Taint. You know he's going to hold on to that. But there's a Blight Bearer as well, which this is interesting because Donkey's deck doesn't rely on poison damage at all. So we're going to have these other undead units in a second lose some countdown, including possibly the Harvester. But Blight Bearer and uh, Bloodline, Blight Lair, Bloodline Taint, as I'm stumbling over words here. And uh, otherwise, poisons that are played by Lahopa could 
but make things work just a little bit. But there we go. There's a soul steal. So, like I said, it was within range. You get things down to two health, and there you go. So, Harvester is going to be getting ready to go here. And otherwise, everybody's going to be hungry, hungry, ready to eat. So, what's interesting about that move, you may have wondered why the Flesh Animator got moved into range. It's because the Harvester got poisoned by the Blight Bear that died. Harvester's a lot pretty squishy with four health they're very much an offensive unit but right now that harvester is as good as dead it has curse two from the first bloodline taint that's brought out and that's where donkey could be kicking himself in the face a little bit by playing an undead deck because he's going to be very susceptible to those taints and now he's it looks like he's going to try and focus in on the harvester just a little bit and yes he can actually guarantee that the shambler it's going to move once every time it attacks we can't guarantee that this harvester is knocked down to one health so Donkey getting a lot of idle damage early, actually, if he's not playing any Dominion units, but if he was, he did get a very early idle down, and that can snowball very quickly, but Baleful Witch, that is a, not a miraculous draw, but an awesome draw for Lahopa here, because that activates any curse, and with Bloodline Taint, that means everybody that's cursed takes some damage here, so Slayer Vigids, still there, Cursed too, it's the only thing that's still alive, and there we go. Donkey admitting he did not submit his deck. Cheater. Not really. Not at all. We don't mind. Donkey gave his decks later on. And I was able to look at him just fine. So, Husk, and here we go. Once again, the Rod Eater ready to play Hungry Hungry Hippos. But, uh, La Hopa getting kind of the things that he wants right now. Rattle him is a very interesting uh, part of the deck because it does destroy lingering spells. But we haven't seen any of that from Donkey yet. But La Hopa also getting out Neck again. And so that's kind of looks like his way to end the game strategy but soul steals pretty good language not going to be a play it makes because donkey is still only on four resources this is i guess a fast undead deck so just trying to get out a lot of itty bitties which plays very nicely into la hopa and his two harvesters as there is a second baleful witch but there's only one curse to pop at this point so maybe not the best option here oh can he actually activate those harvesters this turn don't think he can but he can make this guy very, very happy. So the Elmar Rider says, nom, nom, nom. Life Stealer is still present. And what do we have here? Potential for, I don't know. He probably wanted some direct damage or something to get rid of the Harvesters. But instead, he gets an Anima Conduit. And those Conduits are interesting because it's anytime one of your creatures dies, it will summon a Revenant if it's not a Revenant there. And Revenants can attack within one turn. They die, but Infectious Blight, there's the first one. And once again, that's going to play very nicely with uh, the Ill with the other Baleful Witch if he gets it out, if he can Bloodline Taint. But there is another pop on the Anima Conduit. It takes pure damage. Mojang is still kind of playing with what damage types mean, but for here, at least right now, Poison is kind of a dicey thing for Lahopa to play, because at least as of the current update where this is out, Poison is reduced by physical damage, so it's not nearly as good against energy. But that doesn't matter, because this is a Decay versus Decay matchup. And we have a harvester that is very likely going to eat this stitcher before the stitcher can stitch anything in stitches let's see how it goes just actually in fact that's going to be two idols down right away oh almost down not quite i cannot math and that is another revenant there as the anima construct is gone and that is a very happy 88 rod eater and unfortunately he's not going to be able to put this in oh that's a very good move there. For those of you who may have missed what just got played, Restless Bones. Undead units get to attack until the end of turn and their count has decreased by one. If you want your revenants to be little bombs, this is a good way to do it. Those two harvesters which are threatening to do substantial damage are suddenly not so threatening. Instead, there's a 9-9 Rod Eater. Now, there, now Lahopa does have an answer by just drawing a damning curse. So he can ruin Donkey's Day just a little bit. But does elect to actually get rid of the damning curse instead. Interesting. But it looks like instead he smells blood and that blood is in the shape of Neckergeddon. So just like that, being able to move your units down one extra. Yeah, you can have your 9-9 Rod Eater. I'll take game one. So Lahopa right there just taking Donkey's undead deck and sending it back to pasture. So that's going to be it for game one. We'll continue with game two where Donkey's going to have to select a different deck and see if he can come up with some answers because right now Lahopa got the draws that he needed and got the combos to work in his favor and when you can get your combos for decay you're going to have a good time so that's it for now this is way to fail stay tuned for part two of this best of three
Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, back with more Scrolls King of the Beta action as we're looking at Game 2 between Donkey and Lahopa. Where last time, Lahopa took Game 1 on the back of Bloodline Taint, overcoming the Undead Swarm of Donkey's Decay deck. And Donkey is coming back with a deck archetype I'm sure many of you have seen before. Yes, this is Mono Energy Ranged, where the star of the show is Bombard and everything else that spits out with it. Is there really a lot of variation from this deck compared to others that I've seen? Not as much maybe there he does run three tempest reavers he does run three oculus cannons i see some people run too he does run multiple furies and fury is a nice sort of complement to bombard because it just lets everybody attack usually you drop a fury when you know you're going to be wanting to end the game or clear the board because either of those will be fine also has three copper automatons for kind of that bomb action so fury copper automaton could end up being a thing but this will be interesting because Lahope is not going to be able to just rely on Bloodline Taint because there is a wider variety of creatures here. But is this a matchup that Decay is not going to be able to overcome because a lot of people have problems with Mono Energy Decay? But obviously the players here are top-notch in scrolls. If anyone can overcome the monstrosity of Donkey's second deck, we'll see if Lahopa can do that. And then who knows? There's one way to find out. Let's go ahead and go to the game. All right, and here we are, game two, Lahopa on the left, Donkey on the right. It's energy versus decay, everybody's favorite storm of fury and tears. So Lahopa holding on to his hand, Donkey immediately mulliganing, and he can play a turn one Dust Runner, and he elects to do so. So right away, getting a kind of fast start here. Dust Runner does eat a lot of things in Lahopa's deck, but right now his draw is still pretty decent here. Illmire Tribesman is not going to be afraid of the Dust Runner, but he does have Soul Steel, which could play pretty nicely if he can get a little bit of damage on the board so donkey just going for his curve at this point so just a simple one to protect the dust runner he does have another dust runner to play spark as well if he really wants to spark dust runner to get rid of the tribesman maybe not the smartest play but oh well soul steel bye bye dust runner so much for that plan so Lahopa immediately being able to swing the board his way. But once again, Energy not as concerned with the early game. Decay not as concerned with the early game. I'm going to expect this game to go a little bit longer than maybe some other games in the tournament so far. Energy versus Decay does have a tendency to slog out sometimes. Even if Donkey does have some cards to try and end this pretty quickly. So two Dust Runners is never exactly what you want to see unless you're Lahopa and you have multiple Soul Steals. Also a Languid. So Lahopa with early answers at this point moves his unit to protect against the Gun Automaton Menace. But Donkey getting one of the key cards here for energy, especially range energy, which is the Oculus Cannon. For those of you who do not know, if, it move, if a unit moves into range, as an in into the row of the cannon, its countdown is set to zero. And that can get pretty dicey with the Mire Shambler having a random movement either up or down. And it looks like he does actually want to force the Shambler to go up. So that is going to make the Oculus Cannon's countdown go down. Looks like Lahopa's kind of sacrificing the center of the board at this point. You don't want an Oculus Cannon early in the center of the board, but sometimes there's not a lot that you can do about it. So he does have a Bombard if he likes to use it. Don't need it this turn at all. It does have a Burn. It does have a Boom Reaver, which is just a range of with solid stats. And right away, don't forget Oculus Cannons have Piercing. So that's an idol that's already getting down just a little bit. But Languid, Languid will help just a little bit. Still one Piercing damage. And he does have Cursed Presence if he wants to play Omar Tribesman. Looks more like the way he's going to go, hoping for the 66% move down, and that's exactly what he got. Because this does move a random tile every time it attacks. So Lahopa, decent board, hopes that he can keep his Harvester alive, but 4 health versus energy is not a lot. Especially with the burn there on this poor Tribesman. Oh well. But Donkey getting some pretty decent cards so far. So the Storm Runner is going to be useful. Bloodline Taint, not as useful as Lahopa as maybe it would have been other times here. He does have a Tribesman. He does have the Darklings, but those Darklings are more for direct idle damage, possibly to maybe end the game. But not too much use for them at this stage, this early, other, other than just tiny blockers, maybe deterrents here. So first Tempest Reaver in here. And just to talk about the card briefly, it does have attack equal to the current energy so on the left is current energy that means this card has zero attack right now it's a good wall and it is armor one which what was i saying in the last game here poison is reduced by armor at least as of this update unless there's something gross that i missed and i apologize if that's the case but that means things like bloodline taint are not gonna or i always want to call it bloodline taint but you'll need to use a curse or something to have poison damage get through at least from the cards in the whole deck but he gets out a second harvester two harvesters is pretty damn nice 
this early, but unfortunately creatures have to die for things to happen with that harvester. And so far, things are not dying unless Donkey dictates that they die. He does have two bombards. He does not have the resources to play a card then bombard, but he can Stormrunner bombard next turn if he sacks for resources. So Donkey kind of slow playing, setting it up here. Doesn't want to get kills to accidentally activate the harvester. He really wants to get rid of that harvester when he is able to do so. So Cursed Presence on the Tempest Reaver. Good start. Baleful Witch just to go ahead and take it out. And I mean, some might say you want to take out the Gravelock Elder as well, but that Tempest, at least up there, was blocking some of the things there. And he calls that a weird misplay. Maybe he realizes he should have gone after the Gravelock Elder. Or maybe he's realizing something that I didn't see there because the Elder is present and his poor, poor Harvester is currently exposed. Not just exposed, Bombard is about to happen, and this Harvester, one countdown away, is not going to be very happy about it. So we're exploding, and things are being shot. And this is the joy of ranged energy, is that everybody can just stay over here and casually fire their weapons. So the hope of getting two Necrogenons, and I'll be honest here, Necrogenon, not a card you want at this stage of the game. A Necrogenon is not really going to do a lot here, other than kill your Harvester. But... With kind of the draws that he has, that may be the only play he's able to make here. So Copper Automaton and Burn as well. I mean, he can't burn at this point, but does he play the Copper? Just to try and get some kind of bomb here. No, elects to go for the Automata Forge. Probably the more astute move, as he has a very big threats on the board for next turn. So unfortunately for Lahopa, it's Necrogeddon or go home. So he moves his units down here, sets that cooldown as much as he can. Wow, that is a very happy Oculus Cannon. Nice thing about Necrogenon is that he gets multiple cards from the Oblivion Seeker. The only problem is, is that he has a bunch of husks that are on the verge of being killed very quickly. Although this, this line of units attacking is going to clear the top pretty easily. The problem is that all Donkey has to do is to move this Automaton up. And this Oculus Cannon is going to be able to leave only this husk with one health. And he does have another burn if he wants to burn a husk, but that's probably not the best idea here. He can start doing some idle damage. I'd say Donkey's pretty well in control. Once again, that's where people say, oh my god, nerf bombard. I don't know about that. But right now, La Hopa definitely feeling the pain of only having Necrogeddon's in his hand. And if I remember right from his deck list, he only runs two. So, gets rid of the hem because we're not going to be seeing lingering spells from energy. Not with this deck. Either. Another Oblivion Seeker. Is this seriously? That is a sad turn if he only has an Oblivion Seeker to play. And then does something along the lines of Necrogeddon next turn. That's not going to be very pleasant. There's an Echomation. Uh, Echomaton, excuse me. From Donkey. So that can help him ramp even more. That's one of the real benefits of that card. It's not ranged, but it helps you ramp. So you can just get more cards instead of the alternative, which is getting more resources. So Lahopa, what can he do here? What can he do? He does have the Necrogeddon and he is moving his units around. Looks like he is setting up for the play with the Oculus Cannon here. He does have some cards. He does have the halls on his side if he wants to, but there's your Necrogeddon. Don't forget, you can move your units one more time after Necrogeddon. He is not married to this position on the board. Unfortunately, I don't think he can crack this Oculus Cannon, although it is languid right now. So he's just going for the bigger units here at this point. Once again, once that Echimation dies, Donkey will get a little bit more ramp. And Tempest Reaver is a very good defensive draw. Atomta Forge is a very good defensive draw. He'll be able to drop both and protect his units. Plus have the Dust Runner up there. It's really valueless. It's just there to have an attack anymore because it must actually do damage to get its insta-kill. And it's not doing damage. As you can see, it can't even hit that idol. How sad. And once again, the pillage is of Hired Smuggler is what's letting Donkey draw those cards. So he gets card draw on top of that. Once again, just a very solid all-around deck. And there's a Blight Bear, maybe just a little bit too late. And no Bloodline Taint now, which could actually work okay with some of the Automatons out there, but not really enough to be justified. So notice here, this still has four attack. A second Automata Forge, interesting placement for that instead of putting it on the front line. But Donkey clearly in control of this game. Yes, Lahopa does have plenty of units on the board, but they're husks. He's been forced to Necrogenon twice, and those Necrogenons didn't really put a significant dent in Donkey's forces. So while Lahopa may have a lot of cards here, he's going to have to do a lot of work to come back. And right now he does have a Bloodline Taint, but once again, Bloodline Taint not the best ever. 
So Infectious Blight could be good. Where does it jump to? Oh, jump to the Copper Automaton. That is not... Oh, even Lopa. Uh, Lopoha is like... Oh, shit. That jumped to the Copper Automaton, so it's going to die anyway. And if I remember right, if it doesn't die to the poison, Infectious Blight just disappears. So that's not great at all. So Machinated. And is this it? This is pretty close to it. Because Dialex is sending me a note, so that's good. Thank you, Dialex, for helping to uh, get this together. And here we go. La Hopa and then Donkey towards the bitter end here. And unfortunately for La, po La Hopa, he does get the Bloodline Taint. He doesn't have a... Oh, he does have a bail for which to trigger it. So he's going to get a lot of these things to go kaboom. But because of that three health, that's not necessarily enough. So Donkey very far ahead still. La Hopa hanging on. So overall, very good. Oculus Cannon happening right away here. So that is a very dangerous looking Oculus Cannon too, because that just puts pressure on this bottom line. Yes, there still is two health here, but at this point, Donkey can kind of pick and choose what idols he wants to go for. At his leisure, La Hopa is really going to have to try and tighten up his defenses here. Infectious Blight isn't even particularly useful at this point. He gets the Ilmar Rodri as well, just trying to beef up his defenses down here. I mean, Donkey can just take out one of these two idols up top and call it a day. But he does have Fury. Fury, not a great card right now. Once again, Fury is a card you want to play to end the game because it knocks down everybody's countdown, not just your own units. So that's why it costs so little. So Echamation, once again, once again, it's nice when you can just rely on your opponent casting spells. And Decay loves their spells. Really, I guess at this point, most all resources are pretty spell heavy at this point. But Decay... At least the Hopus deck does have a lot of spells, so it is pretty reliable for Donkey to try and get some extra umph out of there. Now, Infectious Blight is an enchantment, so that's not the same. But, Cursed Presence, that's a spell. Harvester, that's a spell. Baleful Witch, do your thing. Is that going to get the Harvester to trigger? No. So close, but can't get it done. Is it worth a Fury? No. Is the Cannonetta going to do anything? Maybe not right now. He does have multiple resources, and he can drop a lot of units here, but... I mean, what what does he do at this point? He is going to go ahead and pump out his units with his Atomta Fortress, so that'll be 1-2 right there. And that is useful just to have the blank space up front to protect the Atomta Forge. So I wasn't trying to criticize Donkey when I asked that before, it's just that's not what I'm used to seeing. Of course, if he tucks it down there, there's only one place he can spit units, and that's not always very useful. But regardless... That attempt to forge, we can now send it condolences because it is gone. Meanwhile, Donkey suddenly having to stare down a little bit more formidable of a board. There's a spark which is useful and he did draw a burn as well. So that harvester which is ready to roll out is not going to be doing a thing. So that is a big blow to Lahopa's chances. Especially since Donkey does have a bombard as well. And can he actually bombard his way to victory here? Looks like he's going to hold off on the Bombard this turn, although he could potentially have the Oculus Cannon go through and take out the Rod Eater. And once again, that's potentially because he'd have to kill other units ahead of time. And you can see right there the Rod Eater coming back and getting a little bit stronger every time. So there is your Rattle Hem. Destroy Lingering Spells. Draw one scroll. Not not much more than a card draw in this matchup, unfortunately. But once again, Lahopa has two halls. You do not want halls in this matchup right now. You want creatures. You want things that'll do damage. And right now, the Infectious Blight's not doing a ton for him. Donkey getting out more creatures. Essentially, I guess you could say mono energy uh, range. This is what it likes to do: you get a bunch of creatures on the board and then press your advantage with bombards with haste abilities. And right now, because he uh, let this guy get up to 5 health, now this cannon is going to take it out. Knock this aside, and La Hopa, I hate saying it, but you're in trouble. Probably can't already tell, so Curse Presence once again, is that is a very hungry Echamation. But there's Infectious Blight, there's Baleful Witch, La Hopa trying to get all of his combos to go. Still pretty much in mortal danger, though, as the Infectious Blights are hopping around. He's going to need a few more turns before those become effective, but there's another Bombard. Bad, bad news. Double Bombard. It's all, it's all Donkey has. It's all Donkey really needs. And it's essentially just like an extra haste for the hired smuggler as well. So 
that's another idol that's going to be down. And that's another idol that's going to be under threat here. So Lahopa may not be able to clear with poison in time. And that's one of the issues with Infectious Blight is that you have to wait for it to work. And if your opponent can just keep dumping out creatures, usually you say if it's growth, they can keep dumping out creatures. That's one thing. But here, ugh. Not looking good for Lahopa at this point, as he is using the Curse Mongers for Curse, Curse Presence as well. Just trying to kill everything he can to get his Blight going. Does go ahead and kill the Oculus Cannon. Wow, it is a rare sight to see an Oculus Cannon go down. But it is turn 22. But there, oh no, there's another Oculus Cannon. There's Bombard, and there is Donkey with the good game well played, as we have the piercing damage is going to be enough to kill with here but it looks like he's dumping his hand anyway doesn't even necessarily need to dump his hand but it's not like he's really tipping off uh, donkey on anything that's unusual so there's the bombard and there is the end Lahopa drops game two and this is gonna be 1-1 one, one, and Lahopa is gonna have to select a different deck just to see if he can overcome mono energy ranged or not but once again Good game, very entertaining by both players. Round 20, and then the Bombards were able to knock it out. La Hopa almost coming back, but just not able to keep up with the dump creature dump of Donkey. So that's it for now. This is Way to Fail. Stay tuned to Scrolls Tournaments on YouTube. We're coming up with, as you saw Dilex mention in the chat, not awkward at all, Game 3 coming up. See you next time. Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail back with more Scrolls King of the Beta action where today we're looking at game three between Donkey and Lahopa. And let's just go ahead and take a look at the decks and let's see a theme in this tournament here. If you really need to win a game, if you really need to win a game, players like turning to their mono energy range decks. So we're going to be looking at uh, energy versus energy mirror matchup here today. And these decks, substantially similar. They have very similar strategies here. But you can see Lahopa running some cards that Donkey's not, such as Violent Dispersal for the hard removal, such as Scout Automaton to buff other automatons, such as Thunder Surge to try and clear the board. Of, uh, of And you saw Donkey last time getting his board a little bit crowded. Whereas Donkey's deck, faster, obviously he plays Fury, so he wants to get as many attacks in as possible. Copper Automaton's a little bit of a twist on the uh, sort of what you expect to see from this deck. So I'm going to be really interested to see if Lahopa's more traditional energy range deck works or if Donkey's going to be able to get the upper hand earlier and hold on to it. But game three, very exciting. Winner goes on to take Nerp the Ninja in the next round. So let's see who's got it. And here we go with game three, La Hopa on the left, Donkey on the right. I do want to apologize ahead of time due to a technical error. Uh, the previous replay that I received that showed both players' perspectives got corrupted and was unable to be recovered. So this match will be from La Hopa's perspective. So let's take a look and see. And we are aware of Donkey's deck. We saw it last time, so you can see kind of the plays here. But La Hopa's opening hand includes... Gun Automaton, Piercing Projectile, Storm Runner, Scout Automaton. Lots of low plays. Lots of a really kind of a fast starting hand for his deck. So Dust Runner on the board right away. So anything that Donkey puts down that's low health could be in danger. But you know what? Gun Automaton, yeah, whatever. It's just going to stand there and say, I will take the bullet. So Donkey either has something in his hand that can protect it, or he just has a death wish for his little guy. I don't know. So there is a, another unit here. So La Hopa getting out his own gun automaton to shield the Dust Runner, as you tend to want to. And there's an automata forge. So Donkey right away saying, Haha, look, you cannot touch my gun automaton. So La Hopa, he could potentially ramp up to burn in a few turns. But let's hear piercing projectile on the Dust Runner. And there's a shot, and that's a piercing shot. For those of you that don't know, it may do just a little bit of damage, but piercing rounds up. Doesn't matter. It gets attack plus one. And damn, Donkey, you just got served. Dust Runner with piercing is scary. Donkey giving compliments. La Hopa saying that's my secret weapon. And Donkey's in trouble early. And I know I've said before, this energy deck doesn't necessarily care as much about early game. But in the mirror match, it does matter. So, oh man, La Hopa having multiple units to buff and Donkey is in trouble early. That's a time to forge down. You don't want to use a burn on the Dust Runner if you don't have to, but that Dust Runner is so dangerous with the piercing shot. So, La Hopa likes the position he's in, has some good automaton 
action right there. It's a shame we can't see what Donkey's hand is, but so far, Donkey's been able to respond, but Lahopa still ahead, only a card down and has two on the board, so not really down at all. So Donkey has a few plays, has a Storm Runner. It looks like he's just going to try and reset, rebuild his board just a little bit. Both of them sitting on four resources right now. Lahopa sacking up to five, as there's an Atom to Forge himself. Question is, will he try and protect his Scout Automaton? Not a terrible idea because it is it, its buff is valuable, and it doesn't appear that Donkey Lahopa didn't see Donkey play Thunder Surge this time, so he's not respecting the Thunder Surge. No reason to when Donkey's only sitting on four resources. And if you remember last game, Donkey was reticent to really go up much higher than five for a long time. So Ectomaton or Echomaton. I don't know why I want to call Ecto like Ghostbusters or something, but there we go. Uh, Lahopa with multiple cannon edits. I always have to do a quick double take to say this is a mirror match. Who's what? What's who? Great burn draw for just that was Donkey's sort of answer to that whole line behind here. Is now Lahopa once again disrespecting any kind of Thunder Surge play. And what's Donkey to do? He does not have control of the middle, so he's ceding it to Lahopa. Donkey putting units on the top and the bottom does one idle damage. Whoopity doo at this point. Lahopa definitely in a much stronger position here. So Gravelock Elder as well, using the Scout of Thomas Hunt as the chump blocker, but it is a scout. Is he gonna do anything else or he's just gonna tickle the cannonetta just a little bit? That one bit of damage can be important if he gets to Thunder Surge. Otherwise he could use Piercing Projectile as well on anything. Piercing Projectile and Gravelock Elder. Nothing to be ashamed of with that. So here's the Copper Automaton. Like I said, that's Donkey's kind of twist on this deck a little bit, but he doesn't really have anything to speed it up, and this would be a terrible fury, just because that means everybody would attack next turn. So does he have a Bombard? He can't play a Bombard even if he has it, because he's down to one resource. So Lahopa, in better position right now, does have a Spark. Thunder Surge, great play there. So does he Spark the Ectomaton next turn, or does he Spark the Cannonetta? One way or another, he is putting the Scout Automaton and saying essentially, yeah, you can do two damage to it, whatever. But Donkey elects to do three with the burn. So, does once again, what can he do in this situation? We don't know because we can't necessarily see his cards. But right now, if we look at kind of the board state right here, both players at four cards, La, La Hopa on one more resource. Donkey having some more creatures out, but I'd say La Hopa's board is possibly higher quality with the Gravelock Elder. Plus, La Hopa has the Violent Dispersal in his hand if he decides that he needs to destroy something. But right now... There's not enough big targets to make a difference here, so this is this could be not quite a clean sweep, but about as close as you're going to see in this matchup. So Lahopa dominating position now, and that's where Donkey's take was pretty perilous here for a game three. This is quickly spiraling out of control for Donkey just from those opening turns, not being able to recover, and sometimes in the mirror, just getting that early advantage is enough because you're not scrambling for cards. Lahopa even being able to dump out. Another automaton if he wants to. No, he doesn't have the scout anymore. And he doesn't have Bombard in his hand either. So maybe this is a race to see who will draw Bombard first. But Donkey, there's Fury. Is this the time where he answers here? He still has four resources left. And he is going to take out a Greyblock Elder. But, oh, that automaton's still there. There's so much on the board. And it's all going to be able to attack. That's, I don't want to call it a Desperation Fury. But it is a Desperation Fury. I've ever seen one so right away Lahopa knowing he has the advantage working to press the advantage even though he hasn't gotten a bombard yet just doing what he can to take this on so, so here we're gonna have another unit spat out possibly it already happened there we go now I'm catching up with the program so burn again everybody gets burns because it's energy but do we have much else there's not gonna be another attack because it doesn't have four attack so, Lahopa, is this the part where he takes it? He has Machinated, he has two Machinateds in his hand. And a Spark and a Violet Dispersal. What can he do at this point? Can he possibly take out some idols right here? Donkey, on the other hand, is going to have to respond to this hand because we know what Lahopa has. And there is... Okay, so Donkey working really hard to protect this lane. And there is the Bombard. A few turns too late. We've seen so many energy players get early bombards and being able to run, but Lahopa machinate, oh, machinated on the top row times two. This was a best of three, but it just comes down to a very short energy versus energy game 
as La Hopa takes the victory on kind of a surprise. Guess what? I got two Machinateds and a 12 attack. Gun Automaton didn't see that coming. So there we go. Without even getting a significant bombard play that I recall, unless I'm just delusional here, La Hopa is carries the day and is victorious over Donkey, and he will get to play in the next round against Nerp. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Continue to watch the tournament on Scrolls Tournaments here on YouTube, and otherwise, this is way to fail. You're welcome to check out my channel if you like. It's in the comments and all that, but thanks for sticking around with the tournament and supporting Scrolls. Beta is almost over. Let's see if we can crown somebody because, you know, we got one laying around somewhere. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.